So let's say you feel like blowing something up. I mean, safely and passively, of course, but blowing something up anyway. You don't happen to have any sand or creeper remains in your inventory, but that's okay, because contrary to popular belief, Minecraft got it wrong. To make TNT, aka trinitrotoluene, aka 2-methyl-1,3,5-nitrobenzene, two chemical components are required. The first is toluene, or methylbenzene, a simple aromatic compound that can be found naturally in some pine oils or can be manufactured in factories or labs. The second, that which accounts for these three little twiggy bits on the side, is a batch of positively charged nitronium ions. Unfortunately, nitronium ions do not occur naturally, and nor can you buy them from a store, so we're just going to have to make some ourselves. For this, we can create the following catalytic reaction, or catalysis. Catalysis is a reaction that to increase the rate of, or in this case start, another chemical reaction due to the participation of a substance called a catalyst. Unlike other reagents in the chemical reaction, a catalyst is not consumed. Think of it like a parent gently pushing their child onto the playground. In this case, we're going to react toluene with nitric acid to provide the nitronium and sulfuric acid to get the nitric acid to share. Sulfuric acid lends nitric acid a proton, or positively charged hydrogen ion, so that the nitric acid can get rid of H2O, or water, as a leaving group. A leaving group is exactly what it sounds like. Now, free from its waterly shackles, this young, positively charged nitronium ion can go off and join the toluene to its heart's content. First, however, it has to take care of one of those pesky hydrogens taking up its seat. Luckily, we happen to have two substances on hand that can get rid of hydrogens and act like bases. As you might recall, our responsible parent sulfuric acid gave away a proton earlier, turning into a negatively charged hydrogen sulfate ion, who could now swoop back into the scene and take a hydrogen back. Alternatively, one of the previously made water molecules could do the same thing, becoming a positive hydronium ion. Either way, somehow that proton will eventually end up restoring the sulfuric acid and its catalytic self, and our nitronium ion will be able to live its dream of completing a mononitrotoluene molecule. But wait, just mononitrotoluene? Not our desired TNT? Well, making trinitrotoluene is a three-step process. What we just did was called nitration, and it's the first step. In fact, each subsequent step is also nitration, wherein we repeat exactly the same mechanism, only it is important to increase environmental temperatures as we go along. After the first nitration, we get mononitrotoluene. That means after the second nitration, we get dinitrotoluene, and after the third, Voila! Trinitrotoluene, TNT. Of course, we also have a lot of this other stuff lying around left over from the reaction. Things like asymmetric and less stable isomers of TNT, and oxidized products and other weird stuff like tetranitromethane. Manufacturers manage to minimize impurities in their TNT by conducting the third and final nitration not in an aqueous solution as most reactions are, but using oleum as a catalyst. Oleum is a mixture of sulfuric acid and disulfuric acid that is a liquid at SAT. The reaction mechanism itself works much in the same way, only there's less water around. To get rid of the isomers afterwards, TNT is washed in a bath of other chemicals so that only the 2,4,6 trinitrotoluene or the 2-methyl-1,3,5-nitrobenzene molecules remain. So there it is. Three nitrations, trinitrotoluene. Please use responsibly.